I never saw it coming. One minute I was folding laundry in our family room, humming along to some mindless pop song, completely content in my cozy suburban life. The next, my world came crashing down around me. The front door slammed open, startling me. I turned to see my husband, Theo, stride in with a resolute expression, followed closely by his overbearing mother, Harriet, and a young woman I didn't recognize. "'Elena, we need to talk,' Theo announced, his voice laced with an unfamiliar detachment. I glanced nervously between the three of them, my heart pounding. "'What's going on?' Harriet stepped forward, her steely gaze boring into me. "'Elena, dear, it's time for you to leave. Theo and I have decided it's best if you move out.' I blinked in stunned silence, certain I must have misheard. Leave? What are you talking about? I turned to Theo, searching his face for any sign that this was some twisted joke. Theo, what is she saying? Theo shifted his weight, avoiding my gaze. I'm sorry, Elena, but I've fallen in love with someone else. He gestured toward the young woman, who was watching the scene unfold with a carefully neutral expression. This is Cora. She's pregnant with my child. The air rushed out of my lungs, and I felt my knees go weak. Betrayal and disbelief warred within me, rendering me speechless. Theo and I had been together since college, and now he was standing here, my calmly informing me that he was leaving me for his mistress. Harriet skied impatiently. Really, Elena, don't make this more difficult than it needs to be. Theo and Cora are starting a new life together, and you need to gracefully accept that and move on. I finally found my voice, rage and hurt lacing every word. Accept it? You're telling me to just accept that my husband is abandoning me for some... some other woman? I turned to Theo, my eyes pleading. How could you do this to me, Theo? After everything we've been through, how could you do this? Theo at least had the decency to look ashamed. I'm sorry, Elena. I never meant to hurt you, but Cora and I, we have something special. I hope you can understand. I let out a bitter laugh. Understand? Understand that you've been lying to me and cheating on me? Understand that you're throwing away our marriage for her? I gestured wildly toward Cora, who shifted uncomfortably under my glare. Does she even know what kind of a man you really are? Cora spoke up then, her voice soft but firm. I know all about Theo's past, Elena. We're in this together, and we're going to make a life for ourselves and our child. I felt like I was going to be sick. Our child? So you're just going to play happy family while I'm cast aside? I turned back to Theo, my vision blurring with tears. After everything, Theo, how could you do this to me? Theo reached out, as if to touch me, but I recoiled from his touch. I'm sorry, Elena. I never meant to hurt you, but Cora and I, we have a future together. You have to let me go. I stared at him, at a loss for words. This couldn't be real. It had to be some horrible nightmare. But the pain in my chest was all too real, and the finality in Theo's eyes told me that this was no dream. I felt my world crumbling around me, and in that moment I knew nothing would ever be the same again. The initial shock of Theo's betrayal had worn off, and in its place burned a white-hot fury that threatened to consume me. As I sat alone in the once familiar living room, my hands trembled with a mixture of rage and humiliation. How dare Theo do this to me? How dare he stand there with his mistress by his side and casually announce that he was leaving me for her? And how dare Harriet, that domineering, manipulative woman, act as if I was the one causing trouble here? I clenched my fists, trying to channel my emotions into something productive. I wasn't going to let them win without a fight. No, I was going to make them pay for what they'd done. The next few days were a blur of activity as I began methodically gathering evidence of Theo's infidelities— and Harriet's financial machinations. I combed through bank statements, credit card bills, and even Theo's email and text messages, uncovering a web of lies and deceit that made my stomach churn. Theo had been carrying on this affair for months, siphoning money from our joint accounts to fund his little love nest with Cora. And Harriet, that manipulative old harpy, had been pulling the strings all along, using her control over the family's wealth to maintain her grip on Theo. As the pieces fell into place, a plan began to form in my mind. I would use their own misdeeds against them, turn the tables in a way they never saw coming. I started compiling a detailed dossier, meticulously documenting every transgression, every shady financial maneuver. This would be my ammunition, my leverage in the battle to come. One evening, 
as Theo was packing up his belongings to move in with Cora, I confronted him, my voice dripping with venom. So, is this how it ends, Theo? You just waltz out of here with your mistress, leaving me to pick up the pieces? Theo had the decency to look ashamed, but Harriet merely sniffed in disdain. Really, Elena, don't be so dramatic. This is a simple matter of Theo moving on with his life. You should do the same. I turned my glare on Harriet, my mind racing. Simple? You think this is simple? Theo has been cheating on me for months, using our money to fund his little affair. And you? You've been manipulating everything behind the scenes, haven't you? Harriet's eyes narrowed, and for a moment I saw a flash of panic in her expression. I have no idea what you're talking about, Elena. Theo is a grown man, capable of making his own decisions. Oh, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about, I retorted, my voice dripping with disdain. I have the evidence to prove it, every last sordid detail. Theo's head snapped up, his eyes wide with alarm. What are you talking about, Elena? I smiled, a cold, humorless smile. I'm talking about the tax evasion, the hidden accounts, the money you've been siphoning from our joint funds. I have it all, Theo. Every last piece of it. Harriet's face paled, and Theo's mouth opened and closed like a landed fish. For once, they were both rendered speechless, and in that moment, I knew I had the upper hand. This isn't over, I said, my voice low and dangerous. Not by a long shot. With that, I turned and walked away, my mind racing with the possibilities. I was no longer the victim, cowering in the face of their betrayal. No, now I was the hunter, and Theo and Harriet were the prey. The next day, I found myself seated in the plush office of Dana, a highly recommended divorce attorney. As I recounted the events of the past few days, her brow furrowed with, with a mixture of sympathy and determination. So, let me get this straight, Dana said, leaning back in her chair. Your husband Theo has been cheating on you for months, using both of your money to fund his affair with this younger woman, Cora, and his manipulative mother, Harriet, has been pulling the strings the entire time? I nodded, my hands clenched tightly in my lap. That's right. I've been gathering evidence, and it's all there. The hidden accounts, the tax evasion, the financial misdeeds. I want to use it to destroy them. Dana's lips curved into a small, knowing smile. Well, you've certainly come to the right place. I think we can work with this. She leaned forward, her piercing gaze locking with mine. Now, I know you're angry, and you have every right to be. But we need to channel that anger into a strategic, airtight plan. This isn't just about your divorce. We can use what you've uncovered to hit them where it really hurts. I felt a surge of hope mixed with a healthy dose of trepidation. What are you saying? I'm saying we can use their own misdeeds against them. Dana replied, her eyes gleaming with determination. We'll go after them on multiple fronts, the divorce, of course, but also the financial crimes. Tax evasion is a serious offense, and we can use that to leverage a substantial settlement in your favor. I felt a familiar spark of defiance ignite within me. I want them to pay, Dana. I want them to pay for what they've done to me. Dana nodded, her expression hardening. Then that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to hit them hard, hit them where it hurts the most, and we're going to make sure they never forget the day they crossed you. In the days that followed, Dana and I worked tirelessly, poring over the evidence I had collected. We crafted a comprehensive legal strategy, one that would not only secure me a favorable divorce settlement, but also expose Theo and Harriet's financial misdeeds to the world. The first step was to file for divorce, citing Theo's infidelity, and the breakdown of our marriage. Dana assured me that the evidence I had gathered would give me a strong hand in the proceedings, and that Theo and Harriet would be hard-pressed to deny the allegations. But the real coup de grace, as Dana put it, would be the anonymous tips we planned to send to the IRS. With the meticulous documentation we had compiled, the tax authorities would be hard-pressed to ignore the blatant tax evasion that Theo and Harriet had been engaging in for years. This is going to hit them hard, Elena, Dana said, a gleam of triumph in her eyes. Once the IRS starts sniffing around, they're going to be scrambling to cover their tracks. And that's when we strike, using the threat of criminal charges to negotiate the best possible settlement for you. I felt a grim sense of satisfaction settle over me. Theo and Harriet had thought they could simply discard me, tossing me aside like a used rag. 
but they had underestimated me, and now they were about to learn a very painful lesson. Do it, I said, my voice firm and unwavering. Make them pay. With Dana's guidance, I embarked on a calculated campaign to bring Theo and Harriet's carefully constructed facade crashing down around them. It was time to turn the tables and show them the true meaning of karma. First, I anonymously tipped off the IRS, providing them with the meticulous documentation we had compiled on Theo and Harriet's tax evasion schemes. I knew it would only be a matter of time before the authorities came knocking, and I relished the thought of watching them squirm. Next, I began subtly planting seeds of doubt in Cora's mind. Through a series of anonymous messages, I revealed snippets of Theo's past infidelities and financial deceptions. I took care to ensure that the information seemed to come from a concerned third party, someone who had Cora's best interests at heart. Cora, being the naive young woman that she was, quickly became unnerved by the revelations. I could see the cracks starting to form in her relationship with Theo, and it filled me with a twisted sense of satisfaction. As for Theo and Harriet, they remained blissfully unaware of the gathering storm. In public, I continued to play the dutiful, forgiving wife, even as I meticulously gathered more evidence against them. I needed to lull them into a false sense of security to make them think they had won. One evening, as Theo was packing up the last of his belongings, he paused and turned to me, a look of uncertainty on his face. Elena, I, I wanted to say that I'm sorry. I know this has been hard on you, but I hope you can understand that Cora and I, we have something special. I fixed him with a cool, impassive stare. I'm sure you do, Theo, and I hope you'll be very happy together. Theo seemed taken aback by my calm demeanor, and for a moment I saw a flicker of doubt in his eyes. You're, you're not angry? I thought you'd be furious. I shrugged nonchalantly. Oh, I was angry, Theo. Furious, even. But I've had time to think, and I realize that this is for the best. You and Cora deserve to be happy, and I deserve to be free of this marriage. Harriet, who had been silently observing the exchange, narrowed her eyes suspiciously. Well, that's very gracious of you, Elena. I must say I'm surprised by your maturity in handling this situation. I offered her a small, tight-lipped smile. Oh, I'm full of surprises, Harriet. But don't worry, I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more of me in the days to come. Harriet's eyes widened, and Theo visibly paled. I could see the unease growing in their expressions. And I knew that my plan was working. As Theo and Cora departed, Harriet lingered behind, her brow furrowed with concern. Elena, I don't know what you're up to, but I can assure you that you won't get away with it. Theo and I have worked too hard to build our lives, and we won't let you destroy it all. I met her steely gaze with one of my own. We'll see about that, Harriet. We'll see about that. With that, I closed the door, feeling a surge of triumph. The first phase of my plan was in motion— and Theo and Harriet were about to learn a hard lesson, that you don't mess with Elena Blackwood. The days that followed were filled with a tense, uneasy calm. Theo and Cora had moved out, and Harriet was spending an inordinate amount of time at our, no, my family home, her presence a constant reminder of the turmoil that had consumed my life. I continued to play the part of the dutiful, forgiving ex-wife, all the while carefully orchestrating the next phase of my plan. Through the anonymous tips and strategically placed breadcrumbs, the IRS had begun to take a keen interest in Theo and Harriet's financial affairs, and I knew it was only a matter of time before the walls started closing in. One afternoon, as I was sipping my coffee and pretending to read a magazine, Harriet stormed in, her face twisted with fury. Elena, we need to talk. Now. I raised an eyebrow, feigning indifference. What is it, Harriet? I thought we had already said our goodbyes. Harriet's nostrils flared, and I could see the vein in her forehead pulsing. "'Don't play dumb with me, you conniving little bitch. We both know you've been meddling in our affairs, and I want it to stop. Now!' I leaned back in my chair, meeting her gaze with a calm, measured stare. "'I have no idea what you're talking about, Harriet. I've been doing my best to move on with my life, just as you and Theo have.' "'Don't give me that innocent act!' Harriet spat, her hands clenching into fists at her sides. We both know you're behind those anonymous tips to the IRS and those little messages you've been sending to Cora. Do you really think we wouldn't figure it out? 
I allowed a small, amused smile to tug at the corners of my lips. My, my, Harriet, you certainly are a paranoid old woman, aren't you? If you've done nothing wrong, then why are you so worried about the IRS poking around? Harriet's eyes narrowed to slits, and for a moment, I thought she might actually lunge at me. You listen to me, you ungrateful little brat. Theo and I have worked hard to build our empire, and we're not about to let you waltz in and destroy it all. You will stop this nonsense immediately, or I swear to God, I'll— You'll what, Harriet? I interrupted, my voice as sharp as a knife. You'll what? Throw me out on the street, take away the last shreds of my dignity? You've already done that in case you've forgotten. I leaned forward, pinning her with a steely gaze. No, this time, I'm the one making the demands. You and Theo are going to give me a $200,000 settlement, and in exchange, I'll make sure the IRS backs off. Otherwise, I'll make sure that every single one of your precious, dirty little secrets is laid bare for the whole world to see. Harriet's face went pale, and for a moment I saw a flicker of fear in her eyes. You can't be serious. You have no idea what you're up against. I let out a cold, mirthless laugh. Oh, I think I do, Harriet. And trust me, you have no idea what I'm capable of. Now do we have a deal, or shall I start making some more anonymous phone calls? Harriet stared at me, her jaw clenched tight, her eyes burning with resentment. I could practically see the gears turning in her head, weighing the options, calculating the risks. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, she let out a defeated sigh. Fine. You win, you manipulative little bitch. We'll give you the money, but this isn't over. You'll regret the day you crossed Harriet Blackwood. I leaned back in my chair, a triumphant smile spreading across my face. We'll see about that, Harriet. We'll see about that. The $200,000 settlement had been a significant blow to Theo and Harriet's carefully constructed empire but I knew it was only the beginning. With the IRS investigation still ongoing, I braced myself for the inevitable confrontation that was to come. It arrived sooner than I had anticipated. One day, as I was going about my business, I received a call from Dana, her voice tense and urgent. Elena, we need to meet. Theo and Harriet are trying to call your bluff, and they've filed a counter-lawsuit against you. I felt a surge of adrenaline coursing through my veins. What? What are they claiming? They're alleging that you've been defaming their character and interfering with their personal and financial affairs, Dana explained. They're demanding that you cease all of your harassment and that you return the settlement money. I let out a humorless laugh. Of course they are. Well, let's give them a little taste of their own medicine, shall we? In the days that followed, Dana and I prepared for the showdown in court, carefully building our case and ensuring that every piece of evidence was meticulously organized and presented. Theo and Harriet, in their arrogance, had believed they could simply bully me into submission, but they were about to learn a very harsh lesson. The courtroom was a cauldron of tension as the proceedings began. Theo and Harriet's lawyer, a slimy, slick-haired individual, took the stand and launched into a tirade, painting me as a vindictive, manipulative shrew who had made it her sole mission to destroy their family. But when Dana took the floor, the tables turned swiftly. With unwavering confidence, she methodically laid out the evidence we had gathered, the hidden bank accounts, the fraudulent tax filings, the paper trail of Theo's infidelities. The look on Theo and Harriet's faces was priceless as the truth began to unravel before them. Their carefully curated public image crumbled like a house of cards, and I felt a surge of triumph as I watched them squirm in their seats. "'Your Honor,' Dana said, her voice ringing out clear and strong. "'The evidence clearly shows that my client, Mrs. Alina Blackwood, has been the victim here, not the perpetrator. Theo Blackwood and Harriet Blackwood have been systematically defrauding the government and exploiting Mrs. Blackwood's finances for their own personal gain. We demand not only the return of the settlement money, but also a substantial portion of the family's assets, which were illegally hidden from the court. The courtroom erupted into a flurry of whispers and murmurs, and I saw Theo and Harriet's faces turn ashen. They knew they had been caught, and there was no way out. The judge, a stern-faced man with a no-nonsense demeanor, fixed them with a withering glare. This is a most serious matter, and I am appalled by the level of deception and financial misconduct that has been presented here today. 
the court will not tolerate such egregious behavior. I am ordering a full forensic audit of the Blackwood family's finances, and I will be referring this case to the appropriate authorities for further investigation and potential criminal charges. As Theo and Harriet were led from the courtroom, their reputations and their carefully constructed empire in ruins, I felt a sense of vindication wash over me. This was not just a victory for me. It was a triumph of justice, a reckoning for those who had dared to cross me. I had won, and Theo and Harriet had been utterly and completely destroyed. The aftermath of the courtroom showdown was nothing short of a spectacle. Theo and Harriet's empire, built on a foundation of lies and deceit, came crashing down around them in a spectacular display of public humiliation. As the court ordered forensic audit progressed, more and more of their misdeeds were uncovered. Hidden offshore accounts, fraudulent tax filings, and a web of financial manipulations were all laid bare for the world to see. The once powerful Blackwood family had been reduced to little more than a laughingstock. And in the midst of it all, I stood tall, my head held high. The settlement money that I had demanded was a mere drop in the bucket compared to what I was ultimately awarded. Through Dana's meticulous legal maneuvering, I had managed to secure a significant portion of the family's assets, assets that had been illegally hidden from the court. Theo, once the epitome of arrogance and entitlement, was now a broken man, his relationship with Cora in shambles. The paternity test results had revealed that he was not the father of her child, a revelation that had sent shockwaves through their already fragile union. Cora, realizing that she had been nothing more than a pawn in Theo's twisted game, had quickly severed ties with him, leaving him to face the consequences of his actions alone. As for Harriet, the once formidable matriarch, she was a shadow of her former self. The public exposure of her financial misdeeds had effectively stripped her of the power and control she had so desperately clung to. She was a pariah, shunned by the very social circles she had once dominated. One day, as I was finalizing the paperwork for the divorce, I received a call from Theo. His voice was barely above a whisper, and I could hear the desperation and defeat in his tone. Elena, please, you have to help me. Harriet and I, we've lost everything. The IRS is seizing our assets, our reputations are ruined, I, I don't know what to do. I listened in silence, a small, bitter smile playing on my lips. Help you, Theo. After everything you've done to me, after you so callously discarded me for your mistress? Theo let out a choked sob. I know, I know. I was a fool, Elena. I was arrogant and selfish, and I hurt you in the worst way possible. But please, you have to help us. We're begging you. I leaned back in my chair, savoring the sweet taste of victory. I'm sorry, Theo, but I'm afraid I can't help you. You made your bed, and now you have to lie in it. Theo's voice rose in desperation. But Elena, please, we have nothing left. Harriet and I, we're ruined. You have to help us. You just have to. I felt no pity, no remorse. They had brought this upon themselves, and now they would have to face the consequences. I'm sorry, Theo, but my answer is no. Goodbye. With that, I hung up the phone, feeling a sense of finality wash over me. It was over. Theo and Harriet had been defeated, and I had emerged victorious. I signed the divorce papers with a flourish, adding a simple message at the bottom, thank you for freeing me. As I watched the papers being filed, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. I was finally free, free from the toxic hold of Theo and Harriet, free to start a new chapter of my life. And as I walked out of that courthouse, I knew that I had not only won the battle, but I had also reclaimed my power, my dignity, and my self-worth. Theo and Harriet may have tried to destroy me, but in the end, it was I who had emerged triumphant. The settlement money that I had secured in the aftermath of the legal battle was a fresh start, a chance to rebuild my life on my own terms. With a newfound sense of independence and confidence, I set out to create the life I had always dreamed of, but had been too afraid to pursue. I invested a portion of the funds into a small business, a quaint little cafe tucked away in a charming corner of the city. It was a far cry from the extravagant lifestyle I had once been accustomed to, but it felt like a perfect fit. I poured my heart and soul into the venture, and it wasn't long before it became a thriving hub of the local community. As I stood behind the counter, watching the steady stream of customers filter in and out, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. 
This was my creation, my legacy, something that I had built with my own two hands. No longer was I defined by the shadow of Theo and Harriet's manipulation. I was my own person, and I was succeeding on my own terms. The transformation in my life was not just professional, but personal as well. Gone were the days of quietly acquiescing to the demands of others, of constantly seeking the approval of those who had never truly cared about me. Instead, I embraced a newfound sense of self-assurance and independence, something that had been sorely lacking in my previous existence. And as for Theo and Harriet, their once formidable empire continued to crumble around them. The fallout from the court case had been catastrophic, and they found themselves stripped of their wealth, their status, and their influence. They had become outcasts, shunned by the very circles they had once dominated. I knew that I could have easily gloated, could have reveled in their downfall, but that was not the path I chose. Instead, I felt a sense of indifference, a realization that their demise was of their own making. They had sown the seeds of their own destruction, and now they were reaping the bitter harvest. One day, as I was finalizing the divorce paperwork, I received a call from Theo. His voice was hoarse, tinged with desperation, as he pleaded with me to help him and Harriet. Elena, please, you have to help us. We've lost everything, and we're barely scraping by. You have to help us. You just have to. I listened in silence, a small, sad smile playing on my lips. Help you, Theo? After everything you've done to me? After you so callously discarded me for your mistress? Theo's voice rose in anguish. I know, I know. I was a fool, Elena. I was arrogant and selfish, and I hurt you in the worst way possible. But please, you have to help us. We're begging you. I leaned back in my chair, feeling a sense of finality wash over me. I'm sorry, Theo, but I'm afraid I can't help you. You made your bed, and now you have to lie in it. Theo let out a choked sob. But Elena, please, Harriet and I, we have nothing left. You have to help us. You just have to. I felt no pity, no remorse. They had brought this upon themselves, and now they would have to face the consequences. I'm sorry, Theo, but my answer is no. Goodbye. With that, I hung up the phone, feeling a weight lift from my shoulders. It was over. Theo and Harriet had been defeated, and I had emerged victorious. I signed the divorce papers with a flourish, adding a simple message at the bottom, Thank you for freeing me. As I watched the papers being filed, I felt a sense of closure wash over me. I was finally free. Free from the toxic hold of Theo and Harriet. Free to start a new chapter of my life. And as I walked out of that courthouse, I knew that I had not only won the battle, but I had also reclaimed my power, my dignity, and my self-worth. Theo and Harriet may have tried to destroy me, but in the end, it was I who had emerged triumphant. With a renewed sense of purpose, I threw myself into the café, pouring my heart and soul into every aspect of the business. It was a far cry from the lavish lifestyle I had once known, but it felt more fulfilling than anything I had ever experienced. I had come out of this ordeal stronger, more resilient, and more in touch with myself than ever before. Theo and Harriet's betrayal had been a catalyst for my transformation, and I knew that I had emerged from the ashes of my former life, a better, more empowered version of myself. As I closed up the cafe for the night, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and contentment. This was my life, my creation, and no one could ever take that away from me again. I was finally free, and I was ready to embrace the new dawn that lay ahead.